I recently got this question on one of my other videos, and I've had a couple of people mention candles in the comments wanting help with candles, and so I'm gonna answer this question and give you a very sort of basic overview of what I would do if I were starting a candle company from scratch today, or if I were going to add a candle line to my existing product selection. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, I'm Steph, my company is Bushel, and I make things that smell nice. And I love to talk about the behind the scenes of running a business like mine in these videos in order to help all of you run more successful businesses or just watch this with no intention of ever starting anything on your own, but you just like hearing about what goes on behind the scenes. Diving right into launching a candle brand, there are a few things that you're gonna have to decide before you even get to the, like, what do I call this business? What does my branding look like? Where am I gonna sell? Those are all things that are good to have like in the back of your mind, but there's some like big decisions you need to make before you really spend any time on any of that. And you also need to test all of your candles and like make sure that this is something you enjoy doing and that you feel like you could do repeatedly over and over and over again every day of the week if necessary. Hopefully, if things go well, that's really what's gonna end up happening. So keep that in mind as you're going about all of these decisions and making your test products. With all of the decisions that I'm gonna talk about, I think what's really important to decide first off is what is the most important factor for me and my brand? And the reason I say that is because it's really gonna dictate how some other decisions get made. So if the most important thing to you is to be eco-friendly and sustainable, you need to keep that in mind before you make any decisions about this business. If your primary goal is to offer an affordable product, you need to have that in mind. If you feel like you're in a market where you are not able to sell luxury goods or a luxury price point, that's something you need to be very aware of because there are some things that are just gonna be out of your reach. So once you've decided like what's the bottom line, like why am I doing this? What What's the most important thing to me? I'm not even saying figure out your ideal customer. I'm saying what's the thing that is going to allow you to stay motivated in this business. Once you have that figured out, the next thing you need to decide is, and this could be one or the other, these can happen, you can prioritize these in either order in my opinion. One is gonna be what kind of wax do I wanna use? And two, uh, or one could go either way, is what kind of vessel am I gonna start with? I would say if you are new to candle making, you don't have a ton of experience, I think an opaque container, meaning you can't see through it. You could use glass, it would just have to be opaque glass. Or honestly, I would recommend a tin of some kind. And the nice thing about a tin is that it will not break when you ship it. It could get dented, so there's, it's not, you obviously have to still like package it with um, enough pack, packing material that it's not gonna get damaged. But dealing with broken product is one of the most frustrating things I deal with, and it only happens with either ceramic products or glass products. It doesn't happen with my candle tins. That doesn't mean that there's not a range of candle tins to choose from. You're still gonna have to decide what candle tin am I actually gonna use so you can get a pretty basic candle tin for less than a dollar a piece, or you can go up to like what Makesy provides or some of these higher end providers and they might be like a couple to a few dollars per candle, meaning your end price point is going to be ex more expensive. When I'm talking about pricing on all of this, keep in mind that ideally your retail price is four times your cost of goods sold at least. You can always go beyond that. Luxury candles surely go beyond that. There's no way that a candle that sells for $100 costs $25 to make. I just don't believe it. But that's where I think a candle tin is a great option. Now there's a lot of really affordable glass containers, which is why a lot of people start with glass. You can get a glass jar for very cheap. But not only is it breakable, which can be an issue with shipping, it's also going to show flaws in the adhesion of your wax when you make the candle. And if you use paraffin, 
which if you're going the affordable route and that's why you're choosing glass and that's why you're choosing paraffin, then it behaves better. So if that's a priority to you to be affordable, I would go with paraffin because you're going to need the properties of paraffin wax to avoid the aesthetic flaws that you can get from other waxes. And it's really, it really only is aesthetic. So if you don't care that those might show, and if you think your customer doesn't care, then it doesn't matter. But particularly if you're going for a luxury look, be really careful with the kind of vessel you choose and whether or not it's going to show those adhesion flaws. Once again, an opaque container will not show flaws. Once you've decided on your vessel and your wax, you're gonna have to pick what kind of wick you wanna use. You can go cotton wick or wood wick. And there's honestly a lot of calculators out there that will tell you which size to choose, whichever one you go with. They can pretty much give you the information you need to at least have a really good starting point for that. You're certainly gonna to wanna to test all of your candles and your wicks before you mass produce any of them. So you can make a candle with no fragrance in it so that you're not wasting fragrance oil in these tests. Eventually you're gonna to wanna to test with the fragrance oil in it as well, but I would start off testing the wick size you want to use with the wax you wanna use in the container you wanna use it. Do a test burn, which is at most four hours at a time you want to see how long it takes for the melt pool, so the wet wax, to reach the edge of the container. If it never reaches the edges of the container in four hours, you have the wrong size wick, so you need to try another one. If it has too deep of a melt pool, your wick is too big and you need to size down so that you don't have potential... It can potentially be dangerous if you have too large of a wick. It can create too large of a flame. It's just you don't want to deal with that. So that's something you're also going to have to figure out before you even get to fragrance oils. Test all of that stuff. I'm really going over this like very simply. There's a lot of information you can find about how to do this in depth, but I just want to give you all like a basic overview of the steps you have to get to before you even decide on fragrances. Once you've got all of those things figured out, you know what vessel you're gonna use, you know what wax you're gonna use, and you know what wick you're gonna use, and you've tested all three of them together, and they have a satisfying burn that it hits all of the qualities of like a good candle, then you can start picking out fragrances. Back to this question I got that prompted this video. I would recommend launching with six to eight cents when you're starting out. I think eight is ideal, but that's also can be a lot to manage and it's a lot of investment and potentially wasted product. So if eight is too intimidating to you, you can go with six, but I think eight is a really nice number because you're gonna be able to hit all the bases. You're going to be able to have a floral, a woodsy, a citrus, an herbal, you know, you're gonna be able to sort of like hit all of the standard fragrances and then also have a few additional that are maybe seasonal or signature like maybe it's a scent that you really love that you want people to gravitate towards first or something that you think is unique that you're offering it just like allows more flexibility for all of that it's more likely someone's going to find something they like in your product line if you have about eight cents when it comes to picking what those fragrance oils are, pretty much every fragrance oil provider has a best sellers list. So I would start there. Obviously, if you want to do something totally different and that's what motivates you is being different than what other people are doing, that's great too. You can spend a little bit more time researching fragrance oils. But if you're really excited about getting up and running as a candle brand and you want to provide scents that people will like, this is a great way to find those scents. Now, the the list of best sellers is huge. So it's not like you're only going to get three options from a website's best sellers list. There's you still get to pick which of that list appeals to you. And so you'll still have different offerings than your competitor, but I just think that like that's the safest way to start if you're trying once again to like get this up and running. Start by buying the little samples that they offer. Get as many as you feel you can afford with the startup money that you have because it's really important to smell these in person. I can't tell you the number of times I've gotten a sample of something and it goes both ways. Something I think is going to smell great, I 
I take off the lid and it is not what I expected. And then other stuff, the name is not compelling to me, but I'll smell it and it's like, oh my gosh, I have to make a candle of this. So you just never know from the description of a fragrance oil what it's actually gonna smell like. So definitely buy samples, narrow it down, do what you have to, ask friends and family, create a little focus group, throw a little dinner party and have people that you trust and people whose taste you think is good come over and give you feedback on those options and then you're ready to start making your first candles. Beyond those first eight cents, there is a lot that still needs to be done. You have to figure out branding, you have to figure out your business, you have to figure out a marketing plan. How are you gonna actually sell these products? But that is too much information for this video. I really just wanted to give feedback to people who are in the early stages of wanting to launch a candle company or a candle line in their existing company. And this was the stuff that I think like this really hammers down the bare bones of what you need to do in order to make this happen. Hopefully this is the type of information you all were looking for when you wrote comments like that. Any additional questions you have, please leave them below. I love talking about this stuff and I love helping people when I can. So I, the, honestly, the best way for me to come up with ideas for more videos is for you all to tell me what you want to know. I've thought about doing like sort of an ongoing series of like a zero to launch if I were going to do this or if I were going to advise someone else how to do it with the knowledge that I have. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely let me know uh, because yeah, I just think it's fun to talk about and um, and it's really, it's so hard to know where to start if you don't have experience with it already. So I love being able to offer whatever advice I can with my, my own limited experience, but it's better than nothing. Uh, uh,